Hey guys, welcome to The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. Alexander Williamson here, and I have a bit of secret history. Well, maybe not so secret, but at one point in time, this was one of the larger uh, producers of filters for fish tanks and aquariums, both salt and fresh water. Now, Halvin was a company that had been around since the 1920s. Sorry, I know I'm coming in and out of focus. Uh, but check out this box. So I found this box at my lo local fish club. And we had somebody donate these. And they were in somebody's collection down in the basement. They were dry and in good shape, apparently. Um, but, you know, they have a little bit of mold and they're a little bit beaten up. But as you guys may know... I'm a graphic designer, and uh, I've worked in a print shop. I've worked with all sorts of packaging and different artistic styles. And I recognize this right off the bat to be somewhere from the 60s through the 80s, obviously, as I'm sure most of you guys could figure out. But upon closer inspection, this actually has a very unique style of printing. Uh, it's basically just like silk screening, but on a bigger scale for industrial things. But we don't see this exact layout and the overbleed of colors as you might be able to see in the leaves here on the edge. We don't see that anymore. And also uh, just the actual ink having white and then a base of cardboard. It's just a little different. It were little clues like that that told me, including the font, Helvetica being big in the 60s and being prominent up here. It's still big, but okay, yada yada, we'll get past that. What I want to show you is what's in the box. And I did some research, and it turns out that this product was... This exact form of this product was filed for patenting in 1962. In 1963, they received their patent. And they kind of changed a couple things, but I'm guessing this is the 1965, 67, somewhere in their uh, version. Although, they did go on to sell this version to another company later. So if anybody out there knows a lot about this company and wants to fill me in with more information, that would be just great. See, register marks for printing, things like that. That's what I clued into. So... When I open this, it's kind of an interesting setup. So you see we've got a clear container, and this is what struck me also. There's crystallization in the plastic. There's not yellowing or cracks, micro cracks, but there are crystals forming in it. So that's interesting. That's a different type of plastic than I'm used to seeing um, than the post-World War II 1950s and 60s plastics were known to be um, they'd either have to be really thick or they were kind of rubbery and to get a clear non-brittle that's still lasting plastic that actually kind of struck me I was like wow that's pretty well made it's a little wobbly looking uh, underneath you can see the edges look wobbly from that side whereas they're perfectly straight here so how does this thing work We'll get back to the plastic in a minute. So, how does this thing work? We have a glass pipette and a filter uh, air stone here. Draws the air down through, aerates whatever's at the bottom, and then that percolates back up through this little grid. Now, they sold this thinking that charcoal was the best thing to go down in the bottom, and this is adjustable. So. You could put as much filter medium for the size of your tank as you needed up to whatever a number four size tank was in the uh, Halvin line. So it, you know, kind of whatever, looks like a hang off the back filter really. Uh, and it's kind of the best of the hang off the back filter because you got water coming in here. Uh, and then you can layer your substrates which was actually in the in the uh, the patent was suggesting that they would also be coming out with a product line of different substrates. So they decided, and this is why I think it's the 1965 through 67 patent, 
to add this cute little log cabin roof. So they marketed charcoal, activated charcoal, and bio rings just in the form of uh, air stones basically, and then sand, which later we you probably wouldn't do that these days. But they'd put that sand at the bottom, then the activated charcoal filter, you'd let this go down farther, and then you'd have a looser either, um, they said fiberglass wool, uh, so basically, a glass I think it actually says a glass wool of fibrous nature so fiberglass uh, which is nasty stuff but it does have a lot of surface area and so you could theoretically do that but they came out with these things in 1967 that look like little logs that are basically bio rings and carbon rings and so they dubbed it the log cabin filter so they actually had some marketing of like kids with it in their fish tank and stuff like that uh, that I found some literature on. Haven't found the actual ads, but if anybody out there knows, I'd love to see it. This is pretty much exactly the same how a hang off the back filter works. Literally, if this was uh, had another L or a U shaped uh, line coming out of it going into the tank and this spilled out here, that would be a hang off the back filter. And minus the sponge, whatever you put in here as the uh, substrate and the colonizing uh, surface for bacteria, that's basically a sponge filter, how an air sponge filter works. So it's totally up to date with what we'd be doing today in the hobby, which I think is pretty cool. And what else I thought was kind of cool while I was digging about the uh, Halvin company is this here. I just wanted to show you, uh, let's see if I can get it to, to be less of a up in your face kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if we can, but check this out. So this is the insert and up here is the box and that is from 1921. So that was called the Minnow Aerator and Oct oxygenator aerator and invigorator so uh the company before it was even a company started patenting different aquatic uh fish things along with uh the new york uh it's one of the new york aquatic societies for fish keeping and breeding and this is pretty high tech uh they also had wire under gravel heaters uh, which distribute the heat actually in a far better way than we have now, but back then you ran the risk of shocking yourself to death. So uh, that's a bummer. But I just wanted to share with you guys this, this uh, little thing. And also, the slots on the top uh, are small enough that it also can be used as a fry keeper or egg hatcher for larger species. And it sits down in your tank, so it's a little different than sitting outside of your tank. Um, it would work just fine today. I actually hooked up uh, same size tubing we use today for the air uh, tube on that little glass piece. I bet that glass piece broke a lot though, right? So what happened to this company? How come they're not known as like brilliant innovators in the field when that is one of the earliest patents in the US? Mind you, the French and the Germans had early patents on all sorts of stuff like this as well. But it turns out that that clear plastic that I was commenting on, that it was odd that it had crystallized rather than cracked and turned yellow, that plastic was part of the patent, is that they had a chemical division in the company. Uh, here you go. Here's their address and everything. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. But... Uh, they had a chemical division for making, you know, uh, <laughs> fiberglass wool for your kid's aquarium and uh, all sorts of stuff that they were trying out in the hobby back then. And as saltwater tanks made a big appearance in, uh, in the 70s and people started getting the like Hawaiian craze, even in the 50s, post-World War II, there was a lot more saltwater uh keeping and parts that were still at the time made of glass because they hadn't found a good way to, to uh, make parts that you could scrub that weren't out of metal plumbing or, or uh, glass and 
without corroding when you're using things to dissolve bleach solvents and so forth. So, turns out that the plastic recipe was bought by Dow Chemical Companies. You may have heard of them. They're only the third biggest, second largest uh, conglomerate of chemical and uh, they make everything from pharmaceutical stuff to medical plastics to rubbers and latexes and uh, Pyrex, all sorts of stuff, spray paint, uh, terrible chemicals that will kill you, uh, fertilizers, you name it, they make it. But they bought the material, they've been using it, they then uh, leased out rights to it, and apparently that was the big uh, money maker of this product was the actual plastic for the time was more advanced than anyone thought the log cabin filter was uh but it sold for uh somewhere between 99 cents and a dollar and 45 cents which not terrible but you know whatever uh in the 60s and 70s and a small company later revived the patent and purchased the uh, patent which had been non-contested or something along those lines from what I was reading I lost track of what happened to it for 20 years uh, I had to pay to look at those records and uh, it wasn't being made so I didn't really care who ha who owned it and traded it but in 1988 they remade this uh, with different packaging same little log cabin style filter and uh, they uh, kind of did a retro thing of it and it works just as well as it would today. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I got this one for free, but if you want me to find other little doodads or if you have some and you want to share pictures or video of them with me, I'll gladly research them and share them with the channel because I think it's fascinating where this hobby has been, where it's going, and how it ties into other parts of life. Like the fact that this plastic is used for IV ports now today with a slight modification uh, I thought that was interesting, you know, or that it's used uh, in dental procedures uh, to keep things sterile and blister packs and stuff. Uh, it was a really good compound of plastic that actually had some fiberglass threading quality to it of some sort. But long story short, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, it encourages me to share this, uh, this, these little tidbits of information of the secret history that lives in your aquarium and uh, that's what i mean by that is just you never know how our aquariums are going to tie into the world at large and uh be it the fish or the technology uh, this is just a little piece of that so ring that little bell if you want to subscribe and see more and if you want to support the channel or donate something uh, you can get a hold of me through our Facebook group, and you can post pictures of stuff on our Facebook group, and uh, comment, let me know if you know more about this or something similar, and or maybe you use this in your youth. Uh, I would love to hear about that. So uh, that sort of stuff is what I live for and what this channel is here for, uh, along with educating uh, myself, everyone else at the same time and uh thank you so much for watching so have a great night take care of your fish take care of yourself and uh have a great weekend bye